Guys, what's up? It is Chad Driscoll here, and this is the Daily Driscoll YouTube show. On a daily basis for the next 30 days, at least, and probably continuing on after, but at least for the next 30 days, I'm going to be giving you the exact information that I respond to my Instagram followers, Twitter followers, Facebook people, or questions I get in a text message. I'm gonna put them on here for you on YouTube. We're gonna discuss in longer form uh, what you know, what my answer to it is, what, you know, somebody else's answer, I might reach out to a few other people to get their input as well, um, you know, influencers in the community and that kind of stuff. But for the most part, I'm going to be answering what I think um, is valuable to you. And yeah, so, you know, I'm just gonna get into it right here. We're just gonna literally go through the, my Instagram here, I'm gonna be looking up. All right, the best exercises for losing fat. Best exercises for losing fat. You know, this is a question I get a lot, and what I want to make very clear, and I usually make it clear on my Instagram, I usually make it clear everywhere, but, you know, this question comes up all the time, whether it's because, you know, I know people just, they will sometimes skim through posts, although they'll always want to, um, you know, find the answer quickly, and they're not necessarily reading the full comprehensive post. They are just you know, reading something and then, you know, asking another question on top of it. So I understand, like, I'm not going to get frustrated that this question gets asked all the time because people don't know. And it's obviously a topic that we need to talk about. So the best exercise to lose fat, um, <laughs> and, you know, kind of sarcastically would be exercising your ability to eat in a calorie deficit consistently. Now, you're like, people are like, well, what the fuck, dude? Like, I'm asking you about a specific exercise. Yes, this is what you should do. You should exercise your ability to eat in a caloric deficit as consistently as possible and do it over and over again. That is the main exercise to lose fat. Now, in the practical term, um, exercise, any type of exercise doesn't necessarily yield more fat gain or more fat loss, right? There are exercises that burn more calories. There are exercises that build more muscle, which end up build, burning more calories at rest. Um, and those would be your main compound movements. But there is no specific exercise that's going to melt body fat off. So anytime you're seeing, you know, these articles on articles in like men's health, uh, women's health, they're saying, oh, you know, do this 10 minute workout to melt stomach fat, like, or do, you know, add these three exercises to um, reduce your, your, you know, your love handles. Don't buy into the bullshit because it is bullshit. It's not possible. You need to gain muscle, you need to gain strength, and then you need to exercise your ability to stay at a caloric deficit consistently. So those are the main things, know that. Now, you know, from a scientific standpoint, the, the exercises that are going to burn more calories and build more muscle, your big ones, like your deadlift, your squat, your lunge, um, and I say all lower body because the lower body, you know, you're, you're using more musculature, you're burning more calories through your lower body stuff. Now, obviously there are exercise modalities like HIIT training and strength training and some, you know, light intensity cardio. I would say if you're on the side of strength training, then HIIT, then uh, light intensity cardio, just because strength training, you're going to build muscle, you're going to burn more, you're going to burn more calories at rest. Burning calories equals fat burn. Um, and then you're going to be, you know, keeping that muscle on. So can you explain intermittent fasting? Does it work? Does it not work? All intermittent fasting is is closing down the overall window in which you are allowed to eat. So, in theory, if you were only allowed to eat for 30 minutes a day, now I'm not saying this is correct, right? If you were only allowed to eat for 30 minutes a day, you would eat less than if you had eight hours to eat or 16 hours to eat during a day. So, that's what intermittent fasting is doing. It is eliminating the amount of time that you have the ability to eat. You're gonna eat a little bit more in terms of overall volume for a uh, for a specific meal, but at the end of the day, you know, the hope is that your calories are going to um, diminish based on eating in that certain time window. Most people, um, you know, I've seen it in different ways. For the most part, the way that people think about intermittent fasting is 16 hour fast, so they're usually fasting from, you know, like 8 p.m. to Let's see what would be 16 hours, 8 p.m. to noon the next day. And, you know, so they're fasting over sleep. They don't eat till noon the next day. And then from noon to eight, which is an eight hour window, 16 and eight, they uh, are allowed to eat. So they might have two, three larger meals during that day, maybe a few snacks. 
but they're hoping that that overall calorie intake is going to decrease significantly. Now, is it magic? No, it's not magic. It's simply because if my maintenance is 3,000 calories, right, and during that eight-hour window, I am eating 3,300 calories, that is a 300 that's a 300 calorie surplus during that time over the course of um, you know a month, two months, three months, four months doing that, I'm going to be gaining fat per se, or if I'm in a strength training program, I'm going to be gaining muscle. Um, but regardless, I'm going to be gaining weight on that. Now, if you are someone where, you, hey, you have a 3,000 calorie intake, you know, that's your allotment, that's what you're burning throughout the day, and the intermittent fasting gets you to 2,700 calories, right? Then, over the course of two, three, four months, you would be losing fat. So, at the end of the day, it all comes down to the overall caloric intake for the day. There are benefits to it, but it's ultimately, does it work for you? You know, if it works for you and you work out in the afternoon and that kind of stuff, then yes, it might work for you. But if it doesn't, you know, don't do it. Eat as you usually would. What do you use personally to eat less calories? Well, to be honest, um, I don't track my calories all that frequently, um, simply because I do want to gain muscle. So I'm more in a, um, I have a kind of a gauge of a surplus that I'm using. And, um, but if I were on a fat loss plan, this is what I use for some of my clients. These are the tips that I give them. So number one, don't buy trigger foods. Trigger foods are something that, you know, would lead you into um, eating or snacking a lot. So things like a cookie, like for me, my trigger food would be Oreos. Like once I have one Oreo, I have to have the entire roll. Um, so trigger foods are bad simply because they're going to cause you to eat a lot more and increase your overall calorie intake for that day. Um, and you know, they also lead to worse habits. Like a trigger food might lead to, okay, you know, now since I ate this, I'm going to give up and I'm going to have a glass of wine. I'm going to have some pizza and I'm going to have some chips and I have a cookie and then some ice cream. And then your calories are all thrown out of whack simply because you ate this one food. So not having trigger foods in the house is going to definitely help you reduce your overall calories. Number two, like we just talked about morning fasting, it can definitely work, decreasing the overall amount of time that you have. Make sure that you're drinking water and coffee. Coffee actually can suppress appetite because it has some caffeine in there, uh, or you can choose your own caffeine um, caffeine product or, or drink per se that, you know, there's just zero calories. Number three, um, I'm reading off a list here because that's I, I actually have this up. Um, number three, find low calorie treats. So um, I think this is big. This is a big one that, you know, when you are in need of some calories or when you're in need of a little bit of food, you're hungry or you like something sweet, find something that's low calorie. So now, you know, they have these ice creams out that are like 300 calories per pint um, or 260 calories per pint. I think Briars is something like 260 calories per pint. You don't even have to eat the entire pint. You could probably eat in two, three servings, limiting your calories down to a snack of like 130 calories. So it's fantastic. Um, so find those, find those things that you like that, you know, there's things in the store um, and there's even tips like on my Instagram page. So if you're not go over to my Instagram page right now, the link is going to be in the description here. Go find it and you'll be able to see a bunch of different options. Um, decreasing portion size. So, you know, like what I have on this post that I'm looking at right now is, you know, I have a chocolate chip cookie that's huge and then I have a chocolate chip cookie that's small. You know, they are two different calorie intakes or two different calorie um uh, portions. So just make sure you're decreasing portion size. Make sure that you're either educate yourself on it. So go and track it for a little bit and know how many calories is in a certain portion size, or just know, Hey, instead of having a, if you know, it's a high calorie item, like a cookie, have half of a cookie or have a smaller cookie than the big one. Um, those are just really easy ways to kind of eat less calories throughout the day. This one is big. Eat low, but low cal, but high volume foods. So what I mean by that, there are foods out there such as vegetables and fruit, for the most part, most fruit, um, that you can eat in a very high volume that aren't gonna be a lot of calories. So things like berries, um, uh, basically all the berries, strawberries, you know, there is oranges like clementines, and then a lot of basically almost every vegetable you can imagine is very, very low in calories. So, you know, broccoli, asparagus, spinach, um, like zucchini, uh, carrots, cucumbers, um, you know, you name it. It's basically, in, if it's a fruit or, or a vegetable for the most part, unless it's like bananas and pineapple, that's like, or actually pineapple is pretty low. And this is bananas per se. Um, 
then it's pretty low. You could eat a high volume of them. So, you know, fill up a full bowl of berries, um, you know, mix in, you know, whatever you want. If you want pineapple, if you want oranges and you want berries and all that kind of stuff, mix it all in, have a big bowl of it, find foods that you can eat a lot of um, that is going to help you. And the beauty of this, right? So the beauty of eating these high volume foods and especially like fruits and things that have a lot of nutrients and fiber is they're very satious. So they're going to fill you up for a long period of time. You're not going to be hungry quickly after, and then you're not going to want to eat, um, you know, the sweets and stuff like that. And then, you know, the last thing that you can do to really decrease the amount of calories that you're taking in is a low calorie condiment. So, you know, a lot of people will, they eat dressings, they eat, um, butters, you know, they fill their coffee with creamers. They, um, it's mostly dressing sauces and dips and all that kind of stuff. So if you can find low calorie condiments that flavor up food. So for me, I like to put like hot sauce onto uh, my vegetables because, you know, sometimes all we all know vegetables don't really taste that great. So I put some hot sauce on my vegetables. I put it on my eggs. Um, what else do I put it on? I throw a hot sauce on my sandwiches, you know, so like things like Tabasco sauce or Frank's red hot sauce. Um, mustard's a very low calorie. If you can find a sugar-free ketchup, it's pretty low calorie. Um, what else? You know, there's now barbecue sauces that are pretty low in calories. So just find things that you like that are going to be low in calories and make sure that you're looking at it. If it's below, to me, if it's below like 30 calories per tablespoon, that's pretty low. Um, you know, when you start getting up into the 60 and eating like the 80, like there are some dressings out there like you'll find in the produce section, like the healthy section, that are like 90 calories per like two tablespoons. That's insane. Because like if everyone, if anyone were to actually measure out like two tablespoons of dressing on a full salad, they'd be shocked at how little um, it actually made the salad, or how little it actually um, went over all, the entire salad. So. Be very conscious of that. Low calorie condiments are fantastic for it. Um, but yeah, so if you can find those, do those six things, you will significantly decrease the amount of calories that you're taking in on a daily basis. So that is for someone, you know, even if you're tracking or you're not tracking, those are all tips that you can be using to decrease your overall calorie intake. Now, guys, I just want to say the, this whole thing with fitness, and you're gonna hear me say this a lot, it's a long process. Don't feel like you have to master everything right now, today. Just take one thing at a time, do it, master it, um, and then work on to the next thing. But all I ask is that you stay consistent, that you stay patient, and you're going to succeed at your fitness. Whatever you do, don't give up. So if you haven't yet, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, if you haven't liked this video and you did, if you didn't like it, great put it on there because I want to know. If you did like it, give it a thumbs up. Awesome. I love you. Um, and then until next time, please subscribe and share this with one person, one person that you think would like fitness stuff, um, that you think would find me entertaining regardless. And yeah, make sure you answer. Oh yeah. And then if you have uh, more questions, go ahead and put them in the comments or Go and find me on my social media stuff because it's gonna be on. It's gonna be in the video description. Go find me on my social media. Send me a DM. I want to know that you saw this video on YouTube, and I want to know what your questions are so that I, I can answer them on here. And then I'll even tag your little your hashtag or your um, what is it called? Your tag. <laughs> I can't even think of what it's called. Uh, your handle. I'll I'll put your handle up on here that you asked the question. I'll show that you did, uh, and then people can either follow you or stuff like that. So. Um, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate your attention. Until next time, be patient, be consistent. This is the Daily Driscoll YouTube channel. Peace.